Okay, um, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I'm going to be speaking about the rise of synthetic cannabinoids in Israel, nice or bad guy spice. Okay. Uh, new psychoactive substances, NPS, uh, cause public health risks in the United States and other countries. They have banned the sale, possession, and use of certain synthetic cathinones and cannabinoids. Early research on the topic of synthetic cannabinoids done in the 80s and 90s, uh, done in vivo in animals, actually supported a positive influence of the drug. The inhibition of cisplatin-induced emesis in pigeons and other research also in vivo in rats supported benefits of synthetic cannabinoids. The medical world is beginning to understand that the use of these synthetic cannabinoids is not just in the more peripheral areas of society, but is drawing more attention as a drug with more toxic, toxic effect than was previously thought. The lack of scientific knowledge, however, is in contrast to the access via internet and peer-to-peer -peer information, which is widespread. Despite increase in those seeking a medical attention following use, the incidences of use in, is still underestimated due to difficulties detecting the substances, the components, because the uh, people who sell it constantly change it. The National Institute of Drug Abuse, the NIDA, uh, uh, wrote that these compounds found in spice have not yet been characterized for effects and toxicity on humans. There is a need for widely available testing and the need for acute pharmacological and epidemiological research to explore acute and long-term effects of the spice use relative to cannabis. A review of research published in the New England Journal of Medicine stated that despite early reports of benign effects of post-exposure to synthetic cannabinoids, in August 2013, patients uh, began to present in a Denver, a Colorado emergency room with severe symptoms of, uh, of after exposure to synthetic cannabinoid called black mamba. Uh, the CDC uh, notes in recent years that there's an increase in users. Clusters of illness related to synthetic cannabinoid use are generally identified through emergency department visits or poison center calls. The poison center received thousands of reports uh, of adverse health effects in persons using these synthetic cannabinoids annually. In 2015, there, was nearly, there were nearly 8,000 calls. Population is mostly in their 20s and 30s and mainly male. All right, the side effects short and long-term, usually neurotoxicity and cardiotoxicity in general um, due to increased potency. I won't go into all the details of the neurotoxicity, but and there are also psychiatric effects, hallucinations, delusions, and other physical uh, symptoms uh, regarding, regarding the uh, cardiac, the cardiotoxicity, which are tachypnea, tachycardia, a hypertension, and also a nausea vomiting. It can also cause kidney failure and rhabdomyolysis. Um, again, that depends on the exposure, the amount of material taken. And there's also driving under the influence. Recently, there have been many more cases of driving under the influence of synthetic cannabinoids. And these effects are similar to cannabis, which is central sedation, impairment of fine motor skills, and police should become familiar with these effects. A more frequent, most frequently reported adverse clinical effects are tachycardia, drowsiness, lethargy, agitation, irritability, vomiting, hallucinations, and delusions, nausea, confusion, hypertension, chest pain, and dizziness vertigo. A police are, and other first responders need to become familiar with the effects of the cannabinoids and develop an awareness of the program, and there needs to also be improved screening technology. Synthetic cathinone and cannabinoid designer drugs pose a major risk to public health. What can be done? Education and awareness. Care providers needed to recognize, need to recognize the novel drug of abuse. There needs to be a public education. The challenge for scientists and clinicians and policymakers is to find creative and effective ways to maximize their efforts in responding to this rapidly changing drug landscape. A, a few years ago, there was uh, in Israel a massive confiscate, confiscation, 3.5 tons uh, discovered by police detectives in the southern region <clears throat> when a storage area in the city was used as a lab for production. 
a, there were approximately a thousand bags of this synthetic drug ready for distri distribution together with huge amounts of substances used, uh, substance used for the preparation of this dangerous substance. The commander of the southern region, southern region said that this was a deadly and painful blow to the drug market in Israel. Um, in addition, an additional measure and an important, in order to access, uh, assess the phenomenon from a clinical standpoint, the Ministry of Health published a directive for hospitals requiring that every hospital report every case in the AR, uh, in the emergency room that is connected with the use of psychoactive uh, substances. This confirms uh, the importance of information from doctors and other caregivers uh, that will aid in the distinguishing and injury uh, resulting from the use of these substances. Uh, the most difficult problem is the fact that the distributors uh, continue to modify the substance according to the legal changes by changing the chemical contents of the substances they are distributing. I just want to note something at the beginning of October in Israel, there were reported um, about eight cases of um, people who arrived in the emergency room who had used nice guy uh, and it had been mixed with rat poisoning and they of course uh, presented the emergency room with hemorrhaging. There were no deaths, but this is an example of the components being changed. <clears throat> I wanted to present a case study. Um, this was a few years ago. So a 22-year-old male living in Beersheba with his family, um, healthy, no allergies, no past history, medical history, unemployed. He was locked in his room for 48 hours. The family called the emergency medical service because he wasn't responding normally. Uh, the EMS arrived. They found him talking in his room, talking to himself, confused, delusional, combative. They could not approach him because he was violent. They tried talking to him and for, he had paranoid thoughts. He thought he was going to be harmed. He didn't want any help or assistance. He did not, he refused to go to the hospital. And the family reported that he'd been awake for 48 hours. He'd used nice guy over the past few months. And this was the first time that he was acting like this. Of course, the family was very afraid for him and the patient was extremely violent. So the EMS called the police. A decision had to be made regarding treatment. He needed to go to the hospital. He did not want to be touched or approached. The approach here was to either give midazolam or halidol. In the end, of course, he received midazolam and he was sedated. After 10 minutes, he was able to be transported to the emergency room. And after several hours of treatment, he was released home. And that's basically the case study. And that's the end of my lecture. This is the bibliography. And thank you for listening.